Hi there and welcome at a new episode of the TypeScript design pattern and today we're going to discuss the abstract factory pattern. Um, the abstract factory pattern, so uh, when we look at the definition it says that it provides an interface for creating families of related or dependent objects without specifying their concrete classes. And especially the last part, without specifying their concrete classes, in very, is very important. So when we uh, translate this to uh, more simple uh, information, it's all about like, okay, I need to make, for example, a connection to a database. And uh, I need to be able to create a connection, to create a command and to execute the command. However, my application, the code I'm writing, is not interested in the fact that it's connecting to a SQL database or an Oracle database or uh, an Access database or something else. Uh, another good example is like uh, when we talk about working with SharePoint, for example, there are multiple ways we can fetch items from SharePoint. We can use, for example, JSON, but we can also use the REST service. And uh, our client application, does not need to be aware of which implementation we use. Do we use JSON or a REST service? The application should not matter, uh, should not be busy with that type of decision. So what the abstract factory does is that you can create, for example, some interfaces and the abstract factory, a concrete implementation of that, let's say a JSON factory, will return a JSON list service. A REST concrete factory will return a REST list service. But both will implement the iList service interface. So the client will just ask this concrete factory, give me back a list service, and then call the specified methods, the abstract methods, on those items returned. And in that way, the client is completely unaware of the type of uh, service it uses, whether it uses JSON or REST. So I do have some example code. So let's switch over to Visual Studio. Uh, over here, what we have here is I got a data service factories class. So this one is actually the fact a factory method the get data service factory, which will return me an object that implements the I data service factory interface. Okay, in this case, it does that by name. So we do the, we call the get data service factory and pass in the name of the item we need. But um, you do not uh, see this pattern very common in, uh, applications because most of the times you would like to use, for example, a configuration file or uh, based on compilation uh, parameters, you return a specific type. So, uh, but in this case, we just use the name. So this is uh, called the data service factories, which we will read as a method, get data service factories, which will return a iData service factory based on a name. So how does this iData service factory look like? An iData service factory, uh, it has a name because we need to be able to fetch it by name and it also has a method get list service, a method get list item service and a method get content type service. All these methods do not return a concrete uh, list service or list item service or content type service. Now these methods sh should return a abstract i list service, i list item service, and i content type service. When we look at our code over here, we call uh, we set the data service factories variable to the abstract factory data service factories. This one over here, and then we say give me back a rest factory, and then we call data service factories, get data service factory, rest data service factory. And we also have a JSON factory. So we get the data service factories, get data service factory, JSON data service factory. So how do these factories look like? Well, first let's have a look at the JSON factory. We have a JSON data service factory, which of course implements the I data service factory. Okay. In this iData service factory, 
when we open it up, we have these methods get list service, get list item service, and the get content type service, which indeed return the I list service, I list item service, and I content type service. But this JSON factory returns a JSON specific implementation for these services. So in my JSON namespace, I have a JSON list service, which implements this I list service. I have a JSON list item service, which implements the I list item service. And I have a JSON content type service, which implements the I content type service. And within our methods, our factory methods, when we call get list service, we return a new JSON list service. When we call get list item service, we return a new JSON list item service. When we call get content type service, we return a JSON content type service. So our JSON data service factory, which implements I data service factory, has indeed these methods to return I list service, I list item service, and I content type service. So then let's have a look at our REST namespace. In our REST namespace, we have the REST data service factory, which implements the I data service factory. And also, of course, has these methods get list service, get list item service, and get content type service. However, the REST factory will return a REST specific class that implements this I list service. So here we have a REST list service which implements I list service, and the REST service, when we call get list service, will return a new REST list service. For the list item service, it will return a new REST list item service. And for a content type service, it will return a new REST content type service. So we have this, these two factories in place, these abstract factories, which will return abstracts, but with a specific implementation. So when we look at our code, we have a REST factory and we have a JSON factory. Even though these factories return different concrete classes, we only use them as their abstract interface, the iData service factory. Because our fetch data method, as you can see, will only have a variable abstract factory, which is of type abstract factory iData service factory. So our fetch data method does not have any clue about which type of data service it will be using to indeed fetch the data. When we then look at our code, we can see that we have a variable list service, which will ask the abstract, uh, which is filled by uh, calling the abstract get list service. We also have a list item service and we call the abstract factory to get the list item service. Um, we use the content type service, uh, sorry, we use uh, have a variable content type service, which is filled by the abstract factory get content type service. Whether it's a JSON factory or a REST factory, our fetch data code is completely unaware. So we can completely change our uh, factories or use our factories uh, uh, specify another factory, and our fetch data code will not change a single bit. So if you want to add another factory like the abstract factory dot SQL, as long as it implements the iData service factory and has a method that returns uh, get list service, which returns an iList service, and that list service of course will be a SQL implementation for the iList service, and the get list item service and the get content type service, as long as those methods are implemented by this iData service factory, our fetch data method does not need to change a single bit. So when we look at the result of that, is that when we look at our output, when we call these fetch data methods, the list service get list service, the first time we call it, we are passing a rest factory. And the rest factory, when we look at our code with the list service, the REST list service, uh, let's look over here, it will just return a new array and it says REST list result. And as we can see indeed, we get a REST list result. The item service will return a list items result. So what we see is a REST list item result. And the content type service will return a REST content type result, which we see right here. Then the next step we do, we're calling, calling that same fetch data method, but then with a JSON factory. So the same methods are called, 
but then with a different factory. So what we see as a result here is that also our results differ. So we have the uh, JSON list service returns a result JSON list service, which we see right here. Our JSON list item service returns a JSON list item result, which we see right here. And a JSON content type service will return a JSON content type result. And by just using these uh, abstract factories, our fetch data method can just do its work by calling, is by only being aware of the abstracts, the iData service and the iList service and the iList item service and the iContent type service, uh, and without ever indeed being aware of these specific implementations. And this is how you use a abstract factory pattern.